Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well and having a great day. We are back in my box room for part two of the video where I spoke to the plethora of mistakes that I made when having my hair and bone flooring installed. So if you haven't seen part one, do check it out because it will give you context to the key points that I will speak to in this video, which will focus on the solutions and remedies that have to be put in place to basically correct all the mistakes that I made. But to quickly recap on the mistakes, mistake one it was not doing extensive enough research on products that would get the finish that I wanted on my hair and brain flooring. I went for unfinished oak engineered flooring and really wanted products that would maintain the natural color of the oak and initially ended up buying a clear oil that wasn't really clear at all, it was yellow. And when I applied it, it completely changed and altered the color of the floor. And the good news is, I only really applied it to a sample, so that mistake was very easy to rectify and I ended up selling the oils on eBay. Lost a little bit of money, but again, wasn't that difficult to remedy. The second mistake was not having my floors adequately protected, which basically led to mistake number three, where I had a lot of water damage in my living room, on the in the middle of my living room, which led to the other mistake whereby I Googled the solution and made the problem a lot worse. And the other mistake that I also made was assuming that the skill set of painting walls is the same as lacquering or varnishing floors. It is not. We definitely need specialists. And the other mistake that I made was ordering the wrong lacquer. So I found a company that was able to genuinely deliver the look that I was going for in terms of maintaining the natural finishing colour of the oak. It's a company called Blanchon who are brilliant at what they do, but I ordered the wrong version of their product, which led to my painter applying the varnish, which completely went against my ambition of maintaining the color of the oak. It changed the color. So those were all the problems I ended up unfortunately facing. And again, this video will focus on the specific things that had to happen to remedy those mistakes. So the moral of the story is really to ensure that you have specialists that are going to be sanding and varnishing and lacquering the floors. I'm using varnish and lacquer interchangeably. They are actually not the same thing. And I don't know why I'm using them interchangeably because the finish that I actually ended up going for in my house or for my floors it was a lacquer, not a varnish. So, going back to the point around specialists, you absolutely, or I recommend anyway, that if you're installing wood flooring, to make sure that you seek specialist advice, not generalist advice, not a painter's advice, but companies that specifically specialize in I suppose achieving the desired outcome, particularly for wood flooring. So I ended up basically researching companies, found a company that I really liked, who basically went through, I would say maybe three or two or three key steps to get to my desired outcomes. The first thing they mentioned to me was that before you apply any product on the floors, the floors have to be properly sanded with sanding machines and that actually was something that my painter didn't do as i mentioned it's not the same skill set so you have to have your floors sanded with sanding machines to basically ensure that all the top layer dust issues that may be on top of the wood are completely and utterly sanded away the sanding technique is quite gentle so it's not going to ruin or damage your floors but the key point they mentioned is that we are going to need to sand all of the floors in your home, which I was okay with because I had this horrible varnish that I had unfortunately ordered by mistake and I'm very, very happy for that varnish to be sanded away. So you can see in the clips that I'm showing the horrible varnish being sanded away in the living room and it was so amazing to see the natural colour of my flooring return. Oh, it was such an amazing thing to see. If you haven't seen the first video, the, the extent of the water damage was, I think, quite significant. And my painter had already sanded that particular area with a hand sander, so I was really worried about having it sanded again with proper sanding machines. 
but I explained what had happened to the company and they really understood and actually were very careful in not overstanding that particular area. But I was so relieved to have pretty much all the water damage um, sanded out and having my floors return to their natural beautiful luster. You can also see that horrible, horrible varnish that ended up being applied to my box room, the room that I'm currently in. To be fair, the varnish in itself wasn't horrible. I just think, one, I ordered the wrong varnish. Two, the floors were not sanded before the varnish was applied. So I mentioned in the first video that when my painter started applying the varnish, it was really inconsistent and left really horrible deposits on the floor. I think the deposits and the inconsistency of the application was basically down to the fact that the floors had not been sanded. So I don't want to blame the varnish. I really want to blame the fact that I wanted the wrong colour and I didn't really know enough about how you should approach um, uh, lacquering um, to know that you cannot directly apply lacquer to floors that have not been sanded. So this company basically sanded all the uh, floors and the stairs as mentioned. They then also of course hoovered all of the dust created by the sanding before any lacquer was applied. The second point that they were able to really advise on is proper products that were explicit in achieving the outcome that I wanted. And as mentioned, I wanted to maintain not just the look of the product or the floor, but also the way that it feels. And they basically recommended a company that I had not actually heard of because when I was researching companies properly, I came across Blanchard, who are an amazing company and specialise in lots of amazing products for floors, but particularly offer products that will not change the colour of your floors. There's another company called Osmo that I came across, but the company that this company recommended was a German company called Loba. So I was a little bit sceptical when I was talking to the owner on the phone. I said, look, oh, I had a few bad experiences. Are you sure that it really can maintain the colour of the wood? And he said, he basically said to me, look, he just applied the same product to another customer um, and it was, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, absolutely able to deliver and he's used and, and he had used I can't speak guys. He had used this product for many, many years and when he sent me an image of it, the fact that the product was called Invisible gave me the confidence that, okay, fine, we will go with Loba and apply that to my floor. So they applied the lacquer, uh, they actually applied the lacquer diagonally. <laughs> so you're supposed to apply the lacquer diagonally, which um, I believe is to kind of follow the natural grain of the wood. So you can see a little bit of the varnish being applied diagonally. Initially, it does darken the floors, but once it dries, it dries absolutely clear. So what was really great about this company is that they were able to finish the entire job in one day. Normally companies would need three days. You probably wouldn't be able to use the rooms for 24 hours, but the product that they used um, was quick drying. It's water-based as well. Um, so that basically meant that the job could be done in, in, in one day. So it definitely, definitely delivered. When I saw the floor drying, my heart, my heart sang, guys, because as mentioned in the first video, flooring is expensive. It is, I think, probably, you know, I would say flooring and the colour of your walls are the most important decisions to creating the look and feel, the aesthetics. And I really felt that I had ruined the floor. So seeing the results that I wanted come to life was amazing. This Loba product absolutely delivered. I would say, you know, it probably changed the colour 0.1%, but honestly, it's not really noticeable to the naked eye. For me, the colour that I achieved was exactly what I wanted, which was super natural. It also maintains the natural texture of the wood as well. So when you're walking on the wood, it doesn't feel sticky or you know uh, like there's anything on the floor at all so it literally looks and feels like there is nothing on your floors which is exactly what i wanted to achieve so the moral of the story is if you are installing unfinished engineered oak flooring have it protected with proper protection to make sure there are no spillages or, or anything that could potentially damage it make sure that you 
have specialists come and sand the floors with proper sanding machines, seek advice on the type of finish that you are looking for because it is very, very easy to get it wrong. So getting specialists and seeking their advice is really, really invaluable. So I'm so happy that crisis was averted, but uh, I hope that if anybody out there is going through a similar process, this video will be helpful and insightful in making sure that you don't make the same mistakes. So that is it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.